Hello, everyone. John Woodard again from Wolfram Blockchain Labs. In this capacity, I'm just hosting a discussion about large language models with Julio, a member of our machine learning team at Wolfram Research. This next video is one word at a time, and it goes through how large language models work. Enjoy. So what is chat GPT one, two, and three? Why the numbers? Okay. Okay. So uh, the numbers, they refer to the GPT part. So the, the, the GPT, the, those are the language models. So OpenAI released GPT-1, and then later GPT-2, and then later GPT-3. And those architectures are not too different from each other. They are just, you know, like some little engineering tricks here and there, some little adjustments, and most importantly, scaling up, you know, making them larger, giving them more capacity to, to learn and to understand. And, and the, the chat GPT is something that was built on top of the, the latest iteration that uh, when, when they started last year was GPT-3. So this is basically how they, they, it, it comes together. You have this G, G, GPT family, one, two, three, and then uh, you have some, uh, some fine tuning, some fine regulation on, on, on GPT-3 to make it chat GPT. How can we learn more about how that kind of sentence kind of comes out and how that output kind of works? Okay, so one thing, um, we can actually use St Stephen Wolfram's blog for, for this. Like there's um, all these images that you see in the blog, you can, if you hover, you can, you see it says, says click, uh, says copy to clipboard. So if you click it, then you can, uh, you can use the, the direct, meaning this stuff is generated using Wolfram language code. So you can, uh, you can go to a notebook, paste it and play with it. So in this case, you see, these are two lines of code and one is, is calling, this is like the public uh, GPT-2 transformer. So this was, uh, this was uh, I mean, all, all these weights, all these, these, these parameters were released. Uh, they, they are in the, in the mm, I mean, open source, let's say. So you can, you, you can import them and you can, you, can, you can create your own copy of the model and, and, and run it. So I'm, this is what I'm running on my computer. So I, I'm, I'm loading this model, which is a very big model and uh, I can also tell you like live uh, how, how big is this model? So you asked me how big, yeah? So this model mm -hmm. is like half gigabytes roughly. So this is the, this is the weight on my, um, like when I load it in memory, I need to have this amount of memory. And uh, mm -hmm. this has like um, one, 124 million weights that are the, these parameters of this big function that, that you tune during the training. So um, basically the, the way you use it in this case is like this sounds like some code to do some styling because we wanted nice, nice looking images in the, in the blog. But what you really care about is this, this final part. Well, the, the model is applied to, to a string. And so this is, this is your, your prompt, yeah? Like imagine that you are like using charge GPT, this is gonna be what you, what you type. And in this case, I'm asking, like, give me the, the top five continuations according to this model. So this model, what this model is doing is actually predicting probabilities for what comes next. Gotcha. So just so I kind of understand here, this is GPT-2, and this is kind Correct. of without the, the chat interface. This is just, Correct. we're just interacting with just the model. This is the plain model. This is a small version that I um, that I could I mean I can run very quickly on my laptop. You can download mm -hmm. like bigger versions, like you need a beefier machine, or maybe I, I don't have a GPU on this, but uh, if I had, I could I could run like a beefier model in uh, in less time. But kind of mm -hmm. this gives us the idea of uh, of uh, the core functioning of this. And we, and we can change. We, 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 if you have like some ideas, we, we, we can try to continue different sentences. Yeah, let's, let's go for it. Let's see what happens. Okay. What, what, what do you want to say? Ah. Oh, now you're really putting me on the spot. Um, yeah. Maybe let's switch from AI to like a, some sort of animal, like a dolphin. Okay. <laughs> So let's say I'm going to change this part, which is uh, 
just just for visuals, but the actual part that I need to change is this. So mm -hmm. I say a dolphin. And I'm not an AD speaker. I hope this is right. Do you spell dolphin this way? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Let's go and see. Okay, you see, this is different now. Ah. So a dolphin so can like swim, can learn, can survive. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, it's cool. It's interesting. It survived. Um, it's a little <laughs> bit creepy. Um, so what do these probabilities mean? Like, where do they come from? Okay. So they come from, I mean, this is the job of the model. So what this transformer architecture is doing is analyzing the sentence. So it's reading the sentence one word at a time. To be more precise, like one token at a time, it can sometimes cut uh, in the middle of words, if uh, if it doesn't have the word in its vocabulary, it, it, it has a vocabulary which contains a limited amount of words. Uh, some words are so, there, like in their entirety, some are not. So, what's a token? Can you explain more, like, of yes. that concept? Okay, so the idea is like, you, I need to digest text. It can be any text. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there's a trade off here. Like, what I can read is also what I want to predict. Yeah, so you, 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 want to, you, you, you want to give a like kind of recommendation for how to continue a sentence, yeah? So, you know, in principle, you could just split everything into characters and then you don't need a very big vocabulary. You know, you have like 20, 30, maybe you add numbers, punctuation, like a hundred characters. But then this model, you, need, you will need to, to run it many times, you know, uh, for every character, you need to run it again. And, and it, then it, it has to learn how to put characters together to form words. So it's a more expensive thing to do. Yeah. So on, on one extreme. So the, yeah. Oh, so I'm, I'm starting to get, it's getting interesting now. So uh, does that mean that there's a larger model when you have the smaller tokens? So it's kind of the trade-off between the token size and your model size, or how does that work? Well, the, the, if you have less tokens, it, it doesn't mean the, Oh, that's an interesting question. Let me think about it for a second. I think that you would need, you might need a larger model to learn um, like a, also how to combine those small tokens to form words. You know, you're not making the life easier for the model. You, you, mm -hmm. It's like, you know, when you write, you don't write letter by letter you write right. word by word or when you read, yeah? If you want to read letter by letter, you make more effort because you, you don't use shortcuts that you, that you have learned, you know? So the, of, the, of the opposite side of the spectrum, you can have a vocabulary which contains like all the words, let's say in the English uh, vocabulary. Mm -hmm. But in, in that case, you, you don't have very many, like, I mean, you, you don't have to learn how, how to build them. But then the, the list of probabilities that you get at the end, it's very, very high. You know, you have one, one probability for each word and then you still have a problem. What do you do if I create like a random word? Something that sounds like an English word, but that is, uh, is not really an English word. So you want kind of to strike a balance between those two. And, and, and so the tokens, the, the tokens are the units that are digested and produced by these, by these models. They are like is a, is a, is something trained. You know, you 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 create them reading reading these the, the, these documents, these books, these articles, and you try to find you you split everything into small characters and then you merge them. You try to find the most common mm -hmm. merges, you know, like the in, uh, and then you can go go ahead and you start building words like uh, I don't know dog. Maybe dog is a, can be a single word, and uh, human. Like all of these, like dolphin, in this case, could be a single word. But uh, uh, I don't know, like, uh, um, like let's imagine like a long, a long word, like uh, serendipitous. That that <laughs> or serendipitously, maybe L mm -hmm. L I gets split in a single token, and seren is a, is a single uh, is a single token. So like this way, this model can kind of doesn't have to do all the job. It starts from a good place but can also mm -hmm. handle arbitrary stuff that you can throw at it. Ah, got you. So it has like a listing kind of of those tokens in, in the model itself, or like yeah. where do those token, uh, where do those tokens get, get stored? And then 
how many tokens are there? Do you know? Yeah, roughly fifty thousand. And wow, yeah, that's these, a lot. these yeah, yeah. And th these tokens are contained in the model at the at the it's called like the tokenizer part, you know, that one that takes a string. We can actually go more in depth if you're curious. We can we could spend some time looking into this. Yes, maybe that sounds like something for um, another kind of exploration. I want to make sure that we get through um, looking at this sentence. So why are like, we've got swim, learn, survive, stay, move. Mm -hmm. Are there more of these words? And yeah. um, what, what is the, like, what do the probabilities look like on the, the other words? Okay, so let me show you this. I think might be what you're looking for. So if I run this model like this, you see I get this long list. So it's like space T, space A, he, in. So this is like a list of, uh, of every token. And, and to answer your previous questions, if I, if, I gave, if I take the T's of this, then I get like, these are all the, let's show like, show you a bit more. So you see the, these are all tokens, individual tokens. Mm -hmm. So you can have like has, space has, you know, it tries to distinguish between something at the beginning of the sentence and in the middle. Um, amplification, <laughs> collider, all, all these are like single. And, and at the end, you see that you have, uh, you have just the alphabet. You know, you, you want to be sure that you can always split to the lo lowest possible level. Uh, but if I don't take the keys out, let's say, for example, let's take the first, uh, let's sort them first. So... Reverse sort. So I wanna I wanna make them start so, the most. Yeah. What you just showed previously was like all the tokens in, yes. the, in the model. Gotcha. Correct. Okay. I didn't get you the length, so you asked me for the length. Yeah, roughly fifty thousand. Oh, you're right. That was. <laughs> okay, so you wanted to see how this looks like. So you see these, these here, swim, learn, survive, they are like these five. Mm -hmm. But uh, we may take, I don't know, the first hundred of them, which is like this list. This is you have smell, control, help, say. And then you can do at least, uh, let's say double log plot, this log log plot on this. So this is roughly what, what happens here. So you see that it really goes down quite fast. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to you to decide what you want to do with this. So you might have noticed that uh, ChatGDP lets you regenerate the answer it gives you. And, uh, and this is basically how it's possible. You know, you can, uh, if, if, you, if you don't pick always the most probable word here, you can just extract a word from this, uh, from this, uh, distribution according to the probability. And this way you have a random result. You can have a different sentence every time. Why would you want like random versus having something that's just completely the same every time? Well, you can. There is, I mean, the way to kind of have a, like a connection to physics, I guess, the way this is uh, explained is using the concept of temperature. So what they say is that if you, have, if you use zero temperature, you always, it's kind of very cold. You don't have much choice. You always speak the best word. Mm -hmm. But this, the, the raising the temperature kind of uh, makes available uh, to pick lower probability words. And wh why would you want that? First, I think it's because it's more, it's more interesting. Like these models, they have a tendency to get a bit stuck. Less and less, the bigger they get. I mean, GPT-2 mm -hmm. less uh, than, G than GPT and GPT-3 even less than GPT-2. But still, is kind of quite boring. Um, and I, I guess, yeah, you want a bit, a bit more variety in, uh, in how. And you want also to, to get the possibility of uh, getting a slightly different result if you're not satisfied with the, with the first one. And it's something you don't want to, to give up, this, this possibility. Right. You want some serendipity. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Interesting. So, um, like, if we if we choose one, then what happens like with the next thing? Does it it keep going? How does it build 
larger sentences and even paragraphs. How, how does that part work? You can imagine like a loop. It keeps going. Like you, you add, you add swim. So let's get your, 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 your finger here. So I can, I can take this, I can, I can, I can just do, so this is, a, this is a result at temperature zero. So this is the best, uh, the best word that it, it got, yes, swim. And then now I can, I can basically take my sentence, I can connect it to swim and have a new sentence. And then I can apply the model. I'm gonna use percent here to, to mean the, 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 previous, the previous output. Okay, bam, period. So it says like, it feels it has to, 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 put, to put a point after this, yeah. So, and then I can take this and I can add it. So it's gonna be boring if I do this all the time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a, a function that does it. So I'm gonna take my prompt. I'm gonna say that, that my function is uh, uh, spring join of my prompt of the, my sentence so far with the prediction from the model. So I make this like a pure function and I say, I wanna do this like 10 times. Mm -hmm. Here it is. The best thing about the dolphin is its ability to swim. It's a great swimmer, but you'll never know. Oh, this is kind of interesting. So now is it gonna have some like, well, I'm interested in, in seeing what's next. I'm there. It's already pulling me in. Okay, let's, let's, let's take a chance. So let's do up to 20. So I'm doing this very inefficiently here. Okay, you see, this is what I was talking about. G GPT-2 is like kind of boring. Uh. Yeah, it's, it kind of gets stuck. Like it, the, the way it represents, it has its mental representation of the sent mental. Its internal representation of the sentence uh, depends on what it has read so far. And if it gets stuck in one of these loops, you know, the more it sees the loop, the more it gets stuck. It's very difficult to come out. So you want some, you want some temperature to, to get out here. So instead of just getting the highest probability output, you can, uh, you can sample randomly. So I'm getting the random sample property here uh, at the end of the model. And I'm saying the temperature is like not, not, not zero, something like 0.5. So now it should do something mm -hmm. different. And every time I call it, it will be different. Okay, it can learn to swim in the water, <laughs> not just to swim in the air. It makes total sense. <laughs> okay, so both of those are fluids, but like that seems like not so accurate. Like, no, why it did is it not. do that? I've, up to GPT two, these models were like a uh, lot of fun, but uh, you know there's a reason why it didn't generate all the ripples that that this thing is generating now, and um, and so this this thing kind of reach a coherent, like a, an ability to stay coherent and meaningful, semantically meaningful, that allowed uh, nice stuff like ChatGDP to happen where you can actually sometimes forget that you are, you are talking to a, to a machine. Got you. So that's this difference between like uh, GPT-2 and GPT-3 is Correct. getting stuck like this and, and um, these kind of, it seems a little bit like it's a bit of nonsense in a way. Yes, yes. And I guess I mean, all these models are generating nonsense and uh, mm -hmm. they could always generate something funny or interesting. The amount of manual selection you have to do to find them is going down at every, you know, mm. at every iteration. Jula, it's been great to go through this. I've gotten like lost in going through the different examples and certainly like learned um a lot i really appreciate your time um so i think it's it for today but i really hope to continue this conversation and make use of your expertise um in kind of exploring the examples in stephen wolfram's blog um so again like really appreciate it thank you john and uh well see you next time then <laughs>